There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Turning on the Christmas lights brings some cheer, brings some brightness into dark winter months. And it's become um, a tradition around the world. Outside Downing Street, um, all the children were there uh, with their Santa hats on, joining in with the countdown. Three, two, one. The Prime Minister hit the button, but didn't hit it quite right. And so the kind of lights went on and then immediately went off again. Uh, and a little clip of that um, travelled around social media on the internet, bringing Christmas joy and cheer to lots of people, but perhaps not in the way that was intended. Um, almost as popular as a picture of the, the Prime Minister with his Santa hat on um, at a, a press briefing uh, and about uh, coronavirus with the, the usual uh, little words on fr in front of him on the lectern um, saying, hands, face, space, party at my place. Um, so it's been, it's been something people have been enjoying, turning on Christmas lights, and the darker it gets, the more we want those lights. This house uh, belonged to someone called Alfred Polizzotto. Uh, when he recovered from cancer, he put up a massive display of Christmas lights in his home, including, you can just see there, a 15-foot tall um, Santa. That's on 84th Street uh, in Diker Heights in Brooklyn in New York. Not to be outdone, his neighbour, who also lives uh, just a little way along the same street, Lucy Sputter, um, really went for it. She has this display uh, in memory of her husband, 30,000 lights, 80 figures, including some 16-foot nutcrackers uh, and two 12-foot soldiers that had to be brought in by crane. Well, the rest of the, the neighbourhood have joined in with this, um, spending around $20,000 per house on professional decorators, uh, who come and do this, um, bringing 300,000 visitors every year from around the world uh, on, on bus tours to come and walk around and look at the area, uh, and two TV documentaries have been made about it. Um, the darker it gets, the more we want those lights. A lot of this started with Alfred Polizzotto recovering from cancer, with Lucy Spatter wanting to remember her husband, after he died. And the darker it gets, the more we need and want something to bring light into our lives. Um, over this last few years, it's felt especially dark. We've been really aware of that. This time last year, Sky News reported sales of Christmas lights more than tripled. And I want us to think just for a few moments about some words from a traditional Christmas Bible reading about where to find that light that we need in this very dark world. Uh, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. They are, they are deep words, and for many people, they've been life-changing words, powerful words. Just want us to think about uh, them a little at a time. Let's think about those first few words there, the true light. That is quite a claim, isn't it? Jesus it's talking about Jesus, isn't it? About Jesus coming into the world, being born into the world, and calling him the true light. Not just a light, but, but the light. The true light. Not just a true light for some, but it says, therefore, for everyone. The baby born in Bethlehem. The writer uh, of that chapter in the Bible, of John chapter 1, has just finished talking about another person from that time, a kind of celebrity, a, a big name, a famous, popular um, speaker and preacher called John the Baptist. And the writer says, well, yes, he was great. He was a, a good preacher. He was able to point people to light and speak a, about light and tell people about light. But Jesus is so much more even than that because he is the true light, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. So, in other words, the Bible is, is saying Jesus, he's not just um, another wise teacher. A lot of people respect Jesus 
as a wise teacher. But it's saying here that he's more than a, an inspiring personality, more than a prophet, more than a guru, much, much more than, than Muhammad or Gandhi or, or Emmeline Pankhurst or Nelson Mandela or uh, Marie Curie or Albert Einstein. All of those are great people, great names, inspiring people. They inform and guide and bring light into people's lives, but they can only bring so much light. They can only point to the light. The Bible says Jesus is the light. Not just someone who talks about it, but someone who who is light, true light. What is it about him that makes him so much more than all the others who teach us or inspire us? Well, John says that to really get to really get it, to really see who Jesus is and why he matters so much. We need to go back, even before the the Christmas story, even before Mary and Joseph and angels and shepherds and wise men, before any of that, right back to the beginning. And that's why uh, Christmas carol readings often do start with those words, in the beginning. Did you see that theme of light going through our readings this evening? We started at the beginning. God, the creator, God who is above everything, is is introduced by the Bible telling us that in the beginning, he made the whole universe and he said, let there be light. And that's what John is saying here. He's saying that Jesus is that light. Jesus is the creator of everything, showing himself to the world that he made. That light that was there in the beginning, before everything else, that is Jesus. But then in our, in our second reading, what happens to that light? Well, people snuff it out. We snuff out the candle. We put out the lights. Because human beings don't like the idea of a creator who tells us what to do and how to live. We don't want to be told what to do. We want to live our our own lives, live our own way. We want to be able to do what we think and and, and get away with it. And so we convince ourselves that we're alone in this universe or that if there is a God that he's not very important and we can safely ignore him. We suppress the truth. That was our second Bible reading. Our second Bible reading ended with the words... Their foolish hearts were darkened. The light snuffed out. God gave us so many reasons to believe and to see him in the world that he made as the people that he made. But we can't see it because we snuffed out that light and darkened our hearts. But the the rest of the readings and the carols, they are full of promise and hope. And they're telling us that the God of of light didn't leave us in darkness, that he he came into our darkness, that he wanted us to see him. And even after we reject him and ignore him and overlook him, he comes into our world. He becomes one of us, that light that we need, that revelation of God, God showing himself to us, comes into human history and becomes one of us and offers to come into our lives and our hearts. It's a massive claim, isn't it? It's a big claim the true light the true light coming into the world and if you make a really big claim like that you have to be able to back it up and if anyone can back up such a controversial claim such a massive claim well it's the writer of these words these words written by John an eyewitness part of Jesus first team Um, He heard and saw everything that Jesus said and did. He had a front row seat. Jesus commissioned him and uh, and some others to speak for him and to write up the official biography. And this is John saying, read it and see. Take a look at Jesus and see for yourself. I've been watching um, the trailer to the new Spider-Man movie. Now, I know most people only watch a movie trailer just once, But I have to admit, I've been, you know, Marvel movie fans don't really know when to stop. 
Um, and I have been watching it a lot of times. I've watched it individually with each member of my family to try and convince them to come and watch it with me, and they're, they're really very patient with me. <coughs> um, but I, I've watched it, but it is just the trailer. And the point of the trailer is to get you to watch the movie. And the point of the words at the beginning of John's Gospel are to get us to take a close look at Jesus. John is saying, look, I can tell you about him. I was there. I saw it. I heard it. I can introduce you to Jesus. Come and meet Jesus as you read the Bible. He will meet with you. He will show himself to you. Well, it's a huge claim. And many people don't, aren't persuaded by it. But, but such a huge claim as that is worth our time. It's worth our attention to explore and to understand the true light. And then John goes on to say the true light that gives light to everyone. The true light that gives light. When people get that light, what, the, what do they see? When we meet Jesus, when we come to know him, what do we find? Well, just briefly, three things that Jesus shows us when he comes into our lives and gives us his light. Firstly, we don't need to be in the dark about God. Here's what Jesus said uh, when he grew up about it. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. What an amazing promise that Jesus shows us, not only shows us that God is real, not only persuades us that he's there, but introduces us to God so that he becomes our father, so that we can know him in the same way we know our father. <coughs> Calvin Coolidge was a president in the 1920s. He was known as Silent Cow because he hardly ever said a word. And one woman um, knew that she would be sitting next to him at a big dinner. And a friend of hers told her, look, you're not going to get here. He's not going to speak to you. He's not going to say anything. In fact, he said, I will bet you $20 that you can't get him to say as many as three words during the whole dinner. And she thought, well, that, that sounds like I should be able to do that. I'll be fine. So she agreed to the bets. She sat next to him. She thought, I know how I'll start the conversation. She turned to him and said, a friend of mine told me that you don't like to say very much. He even bet me $20 that I couldn't get you to say three words during the whole dinner. What do you think of that? And the president replied, you lose. <laughs> but God is not like that. It's not hard to get him to speak to us. It's not hard to get him to make himself known. He is so eager to know is that he's not hidden. He's shown himself in the world that he made us and he stepped into that world and he says, I want to know you. And Jesus is the way that that comes about. We don't need to be in the dark about God. <coughs> and then secondly, we, we don't need to be in the darkness of shame. We don't need to be in the darkness of shame. Jesus said people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. And there's something about us, isn't it, that, that is ashamed. We, we come out of lockdowns, and we start to meet people again, but we don't feel very comfortable with it. And there's a part of us, for, for lots of people, who just feel that if people really saw me, if they knew me, if they knew my, my personality, if they knew about my past, they just wouldn't want to know me. And we feel this desire to to hide ourselves, we feel shame. A minister that I know received a call from someone that he knew a little, um, and the person said, can I come and meet you? Um, and uh, they arranged to meet, uh, and he arrived, and the man said to, to the minister, look, there's something I've done that I want to tell you about, I want to confess to you. He said, okay, if I do that. And the minister said, yeah, if you think that will help, of course, you, you can do that. And the man tried to tell him, but he, uh, he just couldn't get the words out. He was just so ashamed, so embarrassed. He thought he would be able to admit what it was, but he, he just couldn't say it. And he tried again and again, and they just sat there in silence. It, 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 he couldn't do it. And so the minister said, well, would it help if you wrote it down? 
And the guy said, yeah, that, that would help. And so he, he wrote it down. He handed it over to the minister on a, on a piece of paper. And the man was a, a Christian, and the minister was able to remind him of things that he knew. And he started by explaining, look, you know that Jesus, all through his life, he went out of his way to spend time with the people that felt ashamed, the people that others shunned and ignored and, and wouldn't spend time with. And, and Jesus was always there with them, sympathetic and compassionate. And not just in, his, in the life of Jesus, but the death of Jesus too, that Jesus chose to die on the cross. He chose to enter our darkness and suffer our shame and be punished for the things that we've done wrong out of love for us. We, we walked into the darkness. He came in after us and said, let me die. Let me take your place. And the minister said to the man, do you believe in Jesus? The man said, yes. And then he said, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? And the man said, yes. And then he said, do you believe that Jesus died for all your sins? And with tears in his eyes, the man said, yes, I do believe that. And then the minister took the piece of paper that the man had written and lit a match and set fire to it and put it down and they watched it burn up. And then he read out a, a Bible verse, a promise from God, that anyone who comes to God, that anyone who confesses, anyone who puts their faith in Jesus receives forgiveness and is washed and cleaned and, and purified, not just of some, but all sin. We don't need to live in the darkness of shame. And finally, we don't need to live in the shadow of death. We don't need to live in the darkness of fear and despair. Here's what Jesus said about it. Can you mind moving on for me, Hugh, to the next one? Thank you. Whoever follows me, Jesus said, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What a wonderful thing to be free of the fear of death. For Jesus to not only die so that we can be forgiven, but then to defeat death, then to rise again to life, to prove to us, to show to the world that it, that it can be done and that it has been done for anyone who follows him. We've lived with a lot of anxiety these last few years, with a lot of fear and worry. We've been so aware of death in the headlines, perhaps even among friends and family and colleagues. And it's easy to live in that shadow, to live in fear of that. But Jesus comes into our lives and tells us that, that yes, our lives will come to an end, but that won't be the end. That that will be the beginning. And his promise that we have life as it is meant to be, life to the full, with him forever. So let's reflect on that promise, on those words of Jesus. Those words about Christmas, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world.